So to start making maps for CS 1.6 in Jack, go to Tools, Options and Game Profiles. So here, uh, I've got Half-Life and uh, Deleted Scenes, you might only see Half-Life or you might have none. So you want to go into this Edit button and click on Add. And I'm just going to call this CS 1.6 and then click Close. And this is going to have everything being empty. So we're just going to add all of these things. So for the game data files, this is Forge Game Data, the FGD. I'm going to click Add. And we want to find the FGD file. So for me, this is in the Half-Life C-Strike folder. If you don't have this, I'll put a link in the description where you can download it. So you can click open, and now these two are going to have something in them. The default point entity class is uh, what is made when you click on this. This creates a point entity, and this is used for like lights and player starts. And so you can choose the default one that is used whenever you create a new one. So uh, I like to use info player start for this. Uh, you can just choose which one you use the most. And then for the default solid entity class, this is what is made when you make a block using the block tool, and then you do control T and it makes it an entity. That's what's called a solid entity. And so I'm just gonna make this a funk wall, just from my personal preference. You can change this to wherever you want. So now in the directories, you just want to set up these directories. So in the game executable, just find the uh, Half-Life folder and open the Half-Life exe. In the base game directory, we can quite simply copy and paste this, but take out the Half-Life part. Now in the mod directory, we can copy and paste this, and click on these three dots again, and go into the c strike folder and select it. In the source maps directory, copy and paste this again uh, and go into the maps folder here. This is uh, my personal preference of where I like to save the maps to. Uh, we don't need to worry about the model viewer in this tutorial. So now in the textures tab, this is where the WAD files are stored. And WAD files are uh, acronyms for where's all the data. It's basically all of the textures packed into one file that you use in that particular map. So I'm going to add files, and now in C-Strike you can see there's lots of WAD files. You might not have as many as me, uh, but uh, these are the ones that I have. And I recommend you, you get uh, Digit Developer Textures, um, I'll put a link to that as well in the description. And this is basically dev textures, uh, similar to ones in Source, which just let you uh, like uh, decide the scaling of your map and just kind of see the kind of uh, layout of your map before you start texturing it. So I'm going to click open on this and I'm going to use this mainly for my CS 1.6 tutorials. Uh, there's a second WAD file and this WAD file is quite important actually. It's the Half-Life uh, WAD file and this contains lots of tool textures. So like the Skybox texture, the Clip texture, the Trigger texture and stuff like that. And that's going to be really important for uh, making stairs and bomb sites and uh, skyboxes. So now we can go into build programs and this is what we're going to use to actually compile the map. So uh, these are the different things that uh, the, the Gold Source engine uses to compile uh, the map to a BSP. Uh, I'm not too sure which part each of these like play a part in in the compile process but they all play a part so you want to make sure you hook them up. Um, I'm going to link to where you can find some really uh, good ones that you can use. Uh, they're called like ZHLT stuff. Um, it's really cool and loads of people recommend them so I'm going to recommend them too. And you basically just want to choose the one that uh, represents CSG, BSP, VIS and Lite. So for the CSG one, obviously CSG, the BSP is going to be BSP, the VIS is going to be the VIS and then the Lite is actually going to be RAD. Uh, I'm not sure why they renamed it, but uh, this is the rad one. So now all of these are set, we can press apply and OK. So now I can make our first map. So file, then new. And make sure you select CS 1.6, press OK. And this window is just a default thing that comes up 
uh, within Jackhammer. And uh, just for this tutorial, I'm going to recommend you use it. Um, and if you don't want to use it, then you can just check this. But basically, it lets you just make a room just to start out with the uh, dimensions of the X, Y, and Z. And the uh, textures using it as well. So I'm going to click OK. And since we added that uh, Half-Life WAD file, it's going to use all of the textures from uh, that WAD file in this map. So you can see it's just a room with wall textures, floor texture, and ceiling texture. So if you don't know the kind of source and gold source kind of uh, way of doing things, they work in BSP brushes. And so every kind of block you see here is a BSP brush. I don't know why they're called brushes, but they are. So you can drag them around and move them uh, in one of these 2D views. Drag them up, drag them down, move them about. And in these corners, you can resize them and do all kind of cool stuff with them. Uh, <coughs> Yeah. So if you want to select multiple of them, you can hold control and you can do it that way, or you can just hold left click and mouse over all of the ones you want to select, which is pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is make all of these textures, the developer textures from uh, Digit's WAD file. So I'm going to make the floor. Uh, this like grey texture, I'm going to make the walls this yellow one and then the ceilings this white one. This is just my personal preference. So you can select a texture by double clicking on it in the texture browser by uh, going to browse and then if you want to put a texture on a brush you can click on the brush and then uh, click on this which is the apply current texture. So this is the current texture and when you click this it's going to put it on the brush that's currently selected which is very very cool. So I'm going to do this for the walls as well, with the yellow, and hold control to select this last one, and then there you go, yellow walls, and then finally on the ceiling, the white. So now since this is a Counter-Strike map, uh, we're going to need bomb sites and buy zones. So to make these, uh, so let's say we wanted to make a CT buy zone because if we double click on this, this is an info player start and this is actually a, a CT spawn point. The info player deathmatch is a terrorist spawn point. Uh, and so these are point entities, right, which I said about um, earlier. And each of these have a class and the class determines what actual like thing in the level it is. And so this is an info player star and this is a light and they all have different attributes. And so the info player star only has the pitch or roll, which is like the angle that it's at. And the light has the target, the name, the brightness, the appearance, and the custom appearance. Uh, so with lights, the main thing you want to focus on is the brightness, which works in RGB and then brightness. And they also have flags and fuse groups. I'll get into these later though, um, or in a different video. So these are the point entities and you can change the classes of them to suit what you want the point entity to be. So to make something like a buy zone, we're going to use a solid entity, which we also saw uh, before. And this is where the Half-Life wide file comes in. Because you can see all of these textures, right? We don't want to use any of these. We only want to use the trigger texture for this and this is the trigger texture here. We're going to double click on it and to make a new block we can either shift drag on, on one that's already here which will basically just duplicate it or we can click on this block tool and then drag in one of the 2D views to create a new block. You can see it's not actually made yet and so I'm just going to position this to the height I want it and stuff and to actually make it, I'm going to press enter. But your cursor needs to be over one of the 2D viewports. And then press enter and then it makes it. So in Jack, these textures appear as transparent, which is really helpful. So this is currently just an invisible box that you can walk through in the game. To actually make it a buy zone or a bomb target, you want to press control T and this will make it a solid entity and see uh, this comes up with funk wall because I set that as my default uh, class uh, before 
So we want to make this a funk by zone. Then we can choose the team, and I'm going to choose the team as being counter terrorist. And now we have a counter terrorist by zone. And you can do the same thing for terrorists. I can just control shift. Um, I can just shift on this even. Uh, and once this is all ready, and so once you've already made a brush and entity, you can just press Alt Enter on it, and it will bring up the uh, properties, or you can double click on it. Right, so I can double click on that, and then like switch between them. And so here I can choose terrorist instead. So now counter terrorist and terrorist. And so to make a terrorist spawn point, I can just shift click on the info player start. I can then press Alt Enter or uh, double click on him, and I can do deathmatch. So now I've got a CT spawn and a T spawn, but currently there's no bomb sites. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this nice and small here. I'm going to move this guy over here and do the same thing for this as well. So to make a bomb site, it's basically the same process. You can just shift drag on one of these, uh, and let's double click on it. But instead of a buy zone, it's a bomb target. And this is only saying, uh, so you can like chain stuff to uh, happen when the bomb blows up, but we aren't going to do this at the moment. So now this is a bomb site. So whenever the um, so whenever a player goes into this and plants the bomb, the bomb gets planted. And so we can make a second one of these by shift dragging over here, and that's all we need to do. Now we've got two bomb sites, a CT spawn and a T spawn, and this will work as a normal defuse map. Apart from the fact that it's very very bad and has no gameplay to it. So obviously, if you wanted to make uh, like a better map, you could drag these out. Uh, I don't know, extend the floor maybe. Let's say you wanted to drag this into here and make like a wall here or something. And something you've noticed here is that the ceiling doesn't extend out this far. So I could either drag this out to here and have it be an indoor map, or I could use the skybox texture. And the skybox texture basically takes where uh, takes all the faces that have the skybox texture on it and it basically makes it look like there's a sky there instead of a flat surface so you can just search sky in it and uh, this once again is in the half-life wide file and then i can apply it to this face uh, to this brush even and then uh, this will now look like sky in the game and so then to make full use of this this light here I can change it to a light environment and this acts as a sun so a normal light acts as a point light and this light environment acts as a sun and so this pitch I'm just going to make it uh, 80 let's say uh, the pitch is basically um, a rotation so it's not so 90 would be like straight down for example so I'm just going to move these over here and just make some kind of map real quick Okay, so here's a really simple map, it's utterly terrible, but you can get the kind of general gist of uh, what's happening here. You have a counter terrorist spawn, and a terrorist spawn, a bomb site here, and a, a bomb site here. Of course, you can mark them out with stuff if you want to, uh, but I'm not going to go into this in this tutorial. So now up here, you can press this button, and I'm just going to have to save this real quick. and this will let you uh, compile it and so this is going to run those things that we added for the compile things it's going to run each of those, the, uh, run the CSG, the BSP, the BIS and the light and we can change the kind of uh, things that it has so we can do no on BSP if we wanted to but I normally do uh, normal on all of them um, and I also like to check uh, don't run the game so I can run the game myself and so uh, there's one big upside of compiling your maps to the Z Strike maps folder is because then when you create a new game it's just in that list of maps you don't have to do it from the console so I'm going to press OK and it's going to compile it and it's super quick so now if I run the game so you can see here if I press new game I can go into the drop down and here is that map that I made 
I can then press start and it will load in the map. So here's the terrorist spawn point. You can see I can buy stuff. Here's where the CTs would spawn. That's the skybox up there. And the sun is giving light around. And I can plant the bomb in this bomb zone. And I can plant the bomb in this bomb zone. <laughs> 